श्री सचिदानंद सदगुरु साईनाथ महाराज की जय चैप्टर 4 साई बाबा फर्स्ट एडवेंट इन शिरडी मिशन ऑफ द सेंट्स शिरडी अ होली टर्थ पर्सनालिटी ऑफ साई बाबा डिक्टम ऑफ गुलीबा अपीयरेंस ऑफ विताव शेयर्स ऑफ द स्टोरी दस कनुस बात इन प्रयाग इमैक्युलेट कंसेप्शन ऑफ साई बाबा एंड हिज फर्स्ट एडवेंट इन शिरडी थ्री वदर्स In the last chapter I described the circumstances which led me to write Sai Satcharita. Let me now describe the first advent of Sai Baba in Shirdi. Mission of the Saints. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita chapter 4 78 that whenever there is a decay of dharma righteousness and an ascendancy of unrighteousness I manifest myself and for the protection of the virtuous the destruction of the vicious and for the establishment of righteousness I manifest myself in age after age. This is the mission of Lord and the sages and saints who are his representatives and who appear here at proper times helping their own way to fulfill that mission. For instance when the twice born i.e. the brahmins the kshatriyas and the vaishyas neglect their duties and when the shudras try to assert the rights of the higher classes when spiritual preceptors are not respected but humiliated when nobody cares for religious instructions when everybody thinks himself very learned when people begin to partake of forbidden foods and intoxicating drinks when under the cloak of religion people indulge in mal practices when people belonging to different sects fight amongst themselves when brahmins fail to do sandhya adoration and the orthodox their religious practices when yogis neglect their meditation when people begin to think that wealth progeny wife are their sole concern and thus turn away from the true path of salvation then the saints appear and try to set matters right by their words and actions they serve us as beacon lights and show us the right path and the right way for us to follow in this way many saints vis nivritti janadev muktabai namdev gora gunai ekanath tukaram narahari narsibai sajan gase sawatta ramdas and various others did appear at various times to show the right path to the people and so presently came shri sai baba of shirdi shirdi a holy tirth the banks of the godavari river in the ahmednagar district are very fortunate for they gave birth and refuge to many a saint prominent amongst them being janeshwar shirdi also falls in the kopargaon taluka of the ahmednagar district after crossing the godavari river at kopargaon one gets the way to shirdi When you go three course 9 miles you come to Nimgaon from whence Shirdi is visible Shirdi is as famous and well known as other holy places like Gangapur Narsimhawadi Odambar on the banks of Krishna river as a devotee Damaji flourished in and blessed Mangalveda near Bandarpur as Samarth Ramdas at Sajangad as Sri Narasimha Saraswati at Saraswati Vadi So Sai Nath flourished at Shirdi and blessed it. Personality of Sai Baba. It is on account of Sai Baba that Shirdi grew into importance. Let us see what sort of a person it Sai Baba was. He conquered this samsar, worldly existence, which is very difficult and hard to cross. Peace or mental calm was his ornament, and he was a repository of wisdom. He was the home of Vaishnava devotees, most liberal like Karna, amongst liberals, the quintessence of all essences. He had no love for perishable things and was always engrossed in self-realization which was his sole concern. He felt no pleasure in the things of this world or of the world beyond. His antarang heart was as clear as a mirror and his speech always rang nectar. The rich or poor people were the same to him. He did not know or care for honor or dishonor. He was the lord of all beings. He spoke freely and mixed with all people. Saw the actings and dances of nautch girls and heard gajal songs. still he swerved not an inch from samadhi mental equilibrium the name of allah was always on his lips while the world awoke he slept and while the world slept he was vigilant his abdomen inside was as calm as the deep sea his ashram could not be determined nor his actions could be definitely determined and though he sat lived in one place he knew all the transactions of the world his darbar was imposing He told daily hundreds of stories still he swerved not an inch from his vow of silence. He always leaned against the wall in the masjid or walked morning noon and evening towards Lendi Nala and Chavadi still he at all times abided in the self. 
Though a Siddha, he acted like a Siddhaka. He was meek, humble and egoless and pleased all. Such was Sai Baba, and as the soil of Shirdi was trodden by Sai Baba's feet, it attained extraordinary importance. As Janeshwar elevated Alandi, Ekanath did Tibetan, so Sai Baba raised Shirdi. Blessed are the grass leaves and stones of Shirdi, for they could easily kiss the holy feet of Sai Baba and take their dust on their head. Shirdi became to us devotees, another Pandarpur, Jagannath, Dwarka, Banaras Kashi and Rameshwar, Badri Kedar, Nasik, Trambageshwar, Ujjain and Mahakaleshwar or Mahabaleshwar, Kokan. Contact of Sai Baba in Shirdi was like our Vedan Tantra. It quieted our samsara, worldly consciousness, and rendered self-realization easy. The darshana of Sri Sai was our yoga sadhana, and talk with him removed our sins. Shampooing his legs was our bath in Triveni Prayag, and drinking the holy water of his feet destroyed our desires. To us, his commands were Vedas, and accepting eating his udi, sacred ashes, and prashad was all purifying. He was our Sri Krishna and Sri Rama who gave us solace, and he was our Parabrahma, absolute reality. He was himself beyond the pair of Dwandas, opposite, never dejected nor elated. He was always engrossed in his self as existence, knowledge and bliss. Shirdi was his centre, but his field of action extended far wide to Punjab, Kolkata, North India, Gujarat, Dhaka, now in Bangladesh, and Konkan. Thus the fame of Sai Baba spread far and wide and people from all parts came to take his darshana and be blessed. By mere darshan, minds of people, whether pure or impure, would become at once quiet. They got here the same sort of unparalleled joy that devotees get at Bandarpur by seeing Vital Rakumai. This is not an exaggeration. Consider what a devotee says in this respect. Dictum of Gulibua An old devotee by name Gulibua aged about 95 years, was a Vakari of Bandari. He stayed eight months at Bandarpur and four months at Shadda to Kartik, July to November, on the banks of the Ganges. He had an ass with him for carrying his luggage and a disciple as his companion. Every year he made his vadi or trip to Bandarpur and came to Shirdi to see Sai Baba, whom he loved most. He used to stare at Baba and say, This is Bandari Nath Vital incarnate, the merciful lord of the poor and helpless. This Golibua was an old devotee of Vitoba and had made many a trip to Pandari, and he testified that Sai Baba was real Pandari Nath. Vital himself appeared. Sai Baba was very fond of remembering and singing God's name. He always uttered Allah Malik, God is Lord, and in his presence made others sing God's name continuously day and night for seven days. This is called Namasapta. Once he asked Daskanu Maharaj to do the Namasapta, he replied that he would do it provided he was assured that Vital would appear at the end of the seventh day. Then Baba, placing his hand on his breast, assured him that certainly Vital would appear, but that the devotee must be earnest and devout. The Dankapuri, the Kori of Takurnath, the Pandari of Vital, the Dwarka of Ranjod Krishna is here, Shirdi. One need not go far out to see Dwarka. Will Vital come here from some outside place? He is here. Only when the devotee is bursting with love and devotion, Vital will manifest himself here, Shirdi. Mr. B. B. D. or retired Mamlatta Rotana, has proved by his researches that Shirdi comes in the limits of Pandarpur, which was the southernmost centre of Dwarka, and therefore Shirdi was Dwarka itself. Vaitsai Leela, Volume 14, Numbers 1, 2, 3. I have come across another definition of Dwarka, quoted from Skanda Puran by K. Narayan Ayer in his Permanent History of Bharatvarsha, Volume 2, Part 1, page 90, which runs thus. The place where doors are open for all people of the four Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra classes for accomplishing the four Purusharthas, viz. Dharma, Artha, Karma and Moksha, is called Dwarka by the wise philosophers. Baba's Masjid in Shirdi was not only open to the four classes but to the depressed untouchables, lepers, etc., like Bhagavad Shindi, and therefore it is very appropriately styled Dwarka. After the Sapta was over, Vital did manifest himself in the following manner. Kahka Sahib Dixit was, as usual, sitting in meditation after the bath, and he saw Vital in a vision. When he went at noon for Baba's Dashana, Baba asked him point-blank, Did Vital Patel come? Did you see him? 
He is a very truant fellow. Catch him firmly, otherwise he will escape if you be a little inattentive. This happened in the morning, and at noon there was another vittel dashina. One hawker from outside came there for selling twenty-five or thirty pictures of Vitorba. This picture exactly tallied with the figure that appeared in Kokosaib's vision. On seeing this and remembering Baba's words, Kokosaib thinks it was much surprised and delighted. He bought one picture of Vitorba and placed it in his shrine for worship. Bhagwantreo Shirsaga's story. How fond was Baba for Vital worship was illustrated in Bhagwantreo Shirsaga's story. The father of Bhagwantreo was a devotee of Vitorba and used to make Vari's annual trips to Patarpur. He also had an image of Vitorba at home which he worshipped. After his death, the son stopped everything the Vari, the worship, and Shraddha ceremony, etc. When Bhagwantreo came to Shirdi, Baba, on remembering his father, at once said, his father was my friend, so I dragged him, the son, here. He never offered Nivedya offering of food, and so he starved Vital and me. So I brought him here. I shall remonstrate him now and set him to worship. Daskanu's bath in Prayag. The Hindus think that a bath in the holy dearth of Prayag, where the Ganga and Yamuna meet, is very meritorious, and thousands of pilgrims go there at periodical times to have the sacred bath there. Once Daskunu thought that he should go to Prayag for a bath and came to Baba to get his permission for doing so. Baba replied to him, It is not necessary to go so long. Our Prayag is here, believe me. And then wonder of wonders, when Daskunu placed his head on Baba's feet, out came or flowed streams of Ganga Yamuna water from both the toes of Baba. Seeing this miracle, Daskunu was overwhelmed with feelings of love and adoration and was full of tears. Inwardly, he felt inspired, and his speech burst forth into a song in praise of Baba and his leelas. Immaculate Conception of Sai Baba and His First Advent in Shirdi Nobody knew the parents' birth or birthplace of Sai Baba. Many inquiries were made, many questions were put to Baba and others regarding these items, but no satisfactory answer or information has yet been obtained. Practically, we know nothing about these matters. Namdev and Kabir were not born like ordinary mortals. They were found as infants in Mother of Pearls. Namdev being found on the bank Bimlati River by Gonai and Kabir on the bank Bagirati River by Tamil. Similar was the case with Sai Baba. He first manifested himself as a young lad of 16 under a name tree in Shirdi for the sake of Bhaktas. Even then he seemed to be full with the knowledge of Rama. He had no desire for worldly objects even in dream. He kicked out Maya and Mukti deliverance was serving at his feet. One old woman of Shirdi, the mother of Nana Chupta, described him thus. The young lad, fair, smart and very handsome, was first seen under the nem tree, seated in an asan. The people of the village were wonderstruck to see such a young lad practising hard penance, not minding heat and cold. By day he associated with none, by night he was afraid of nobody. People were wondering and asking whence this young chap had turned up. His form and features were so beautiful that a mere look endeared him to all. He went to nobody's door, always sat near the name tree. Outwardly he looked very young, but by his action he was really a great soul. He was the embodiment of dispassion and was an enigma to all. One day it so happened that Bodkandoba possessed the body of some devotee and people began to ask him, Deva, God, you please inquire what blessed father's son is this lad and whence did he come? Godkandoba asked them to bring a pickaxe and dig in a particular place. When it was dug, bricks were found underneath a flat stone. When the stone was removed, a corridor led to a cellar where cow-mouth-shaped structures, wooden boards and necklaces were seen. Kandorba said, this lad practiced penance here for twelve years. Then the people began to question the lad about this. He put them off the scent by telling them it was his guru's place, his holy vatan, and requested them to guard it well. The people then closed the corridor as before. As Ashwatha and Adamba trees are held sacred, Baba regarded this Nim tree equally sacred and loved it most. Malsapati and other Shirdi devotees regard this site as the resting place, Samadhi Stana of Baba's Guru, and prostrate before it. Three Wadas The site with the Nim tree and surrounding space was brought by Mr. Hari Vinayak Sati, and on this site a big building styled Seth's Wada was erected. This Wada was the sole resting place for pilgrims who flocked there. A barred platform was built round the Nim tree and lofts with steps were constructed. Under the steps there is a niche facing south and devotees sit on the barred platform facing north. It is believed that he who burns incense there on Thursday and Friday evenings will, by God's grace, be happy. This Wada was old and dilapidated and wanted repairs. 
The necessary repairs, additions and alterations have been made now by the Sunstan. Then after some years, another Wada, Dixit's Wada, was constructed. Kaka Sahib Dixit, solicitor of Bombay, had gone to England. He had injured his leg by an accident there. The injury could not be got rid of by any means. Nana Sahib Jindorka advised him to try Sai Baba. So he saw Sai Baba in 1909 AD and requested him to cure rather the lameness of his mind than that of his leg. He was so pleased with the Dashana of Sai Baba that he decided to reside in Shirdi, so he built a Wadda for himself and other devotees. The foundation of this building was laid on the 10th of December 1910. On this day, two other important events took place. One, Mr. Dada Sahib Kabadi was given permission to return home, and two, the night Arti in Chavadi was commenced. The Wada was complete and was inhabited on the Ramanami day in 1911 AD with due rites and formalities. Then another Wada or palatial mansion was put up by the famous millionaire Mr. Bhuti of Nagpur. Lots of money was spent on this building, but all of the amount was well utilised as Sai Baba's body is resting in this Wada, which is now called the Samadhi Mandir. The site of this Mandir had formerly a garden, which was watered and looked after by Baba. Three Wadas thus sprung up where there was none formerly. Of these, Seth's Wada was most useful to all in the early days. The story of the garden attended to by Sai Baba with the help of Vaman Datya, the temporary absence of Sai Baba from Shirdi and his coming again to Shirdi with the marriage party of Chan Patil, the company of Devidas, Jankidas and Gangagir, Baba's wrestling match with Mohidin Tomboli, residence in Masjid, love of Mr. Dengali and other devotees and other incidents will be described in the next chapter. Bow to Sri Sai, peace be to all. Shri Satyudananda Satguru Sainath Maharaj Ki Jai